Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Rupen Odabashian. I'm an internal medicine resident in Canada, Ottawa. And I recently wrote my uh, Royal College exam. So I want to share my experience with you guys. So let's talk about the Royal College exam. The Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada, uh, they have an internal medicine specific exam where after we finish three years of internal medicine residency, uh, we write the exam and this exam will help us to practice medicine as an internist um, in Canada um, or to pass residency, let's put it that way so we can avoid complications uh, of uh, definitions here. Um, so when it comes to the Royal College, I wrote my exam uh, in 2022. Uh, so this video is about sharing my experience to help other people to prepare for their exams. It was like when I was preparing for my exam, like I had to find out things by myself on the go and I made some mistakes. So that's why I'm preparing this to help others to prepare for the exam. And let's go to Canada now and let's talk about the contents of this video. Okay, so I'm going to talk about like what is the internal medicine Canadian Royal College exam and then I'm going to talk about the resources that I used. And then I'm going to talk about the schedule, my own schedule and my friend's schedule, how we created a study group. And I'm going to give you some tips and helpful apps, things that help me to go through the exam um, and how I use the different apps in preparation. Okay, so let's start. The exam structure. So one of the things that people don't read or don't visit is the Royal College website. Like I remember like going visiting the Royal College website and reading about my exam maybe like um, two weeks before my exam, I was like, oh, lots of informations are already like there. Why I did not go? Like, because like you hear people, they are doing different courses, which I'm going to talk about. And you do, do whatever other people are doing. Unfortunately, I did not look at the Royal College website. So that was more of a mistake. So let's go to the Royal College website. The, they have uh, in their website, they mentioned like the exam structure. So the exam has two parts. One is written and the other is applied. The written part is 95 to 110 uh, MCQs on day one and there's a day two exam. So usually it's two day exam. That's how it was in my year. Um, each day it's three hours. And then after you do the written exam, you pass your written exam, you do the oral or the applied exam. Uh, the applied exam, it has seven stations. Each station is 21 minutes. Um, one of the station is a break, so mainly you have six stations. It's a two hour and a half. Um, there is a three minutes transition between the stations and each station is 15 minutes. Okay, uh, so two parts, oral and written. Uh, but like, if I want to start studying the exam, what should I start with? Like, maybe I should start studying allergy. Uh, okay, so again, Royal College tells you what are the high yield parts of the exam. Okay, so if you go to their uh, website, they tell you that 10 to 20 questions or percentage of the mark will be on cardiology and uh, five, zero to five will be an allergy on immunology. You can start an allergy, but it obviously the higher year is here is cardiology. Um, and then we have high yield GI, we have high yield RESP. Okay, so the most high yield are like cardio and RESP, as you can see from the slides. So if you want to start studying for the Royal College and you're not sure where to prepare or what, how to like how to start, you can just start by studying cardio and rest. Like this will give you anywhere between 20 to 40 percent of the exam mark if you like got everything right in those two sections. Eh? Uh, so, how is the exam scored? And then it's like it's it's mentioned in their website. So they say that the written examinations are combined to create one overall score. So the written exam you are taking it on two days, but there is a one score. In other words, you need a combined written score of 70% to pass. So if you did like 100 questions on the first day and 100 questions on the second day, so overall you did 200 questions, um, you need 140 right answers to pass. So it's a combined of the both. Okay, you don't need to pass both days. Like, of course, like uh, it's uh, great if you like study for the exam. It's a great exam. I'm just going to talk why it's really important exam, even to pre to start early. But like, you need a combined score for both days on the written exam. And the Royal College also give you a sample of the questions as well. Like, uh, if you go to their website, you're going to find a sample of questions and. 
those are like the questions that they are giving you the answer key and they are giving you the comments and the how they structure the questions it, it, it's a bit similar to the um, american board also internal medicine exam and again medicine is medicine usually in canada and the u.s are on like minor differences but like generally speaking it's uh similar all righty now let's talk about the oral exam the oral exam uh what are the objectives of the oral exam and what are the content okay so they tell you that the oral exam will evaluate the higher order thought process so in the oral exam you will be one on one with an examiner who will give you a case and they will ask you what would you do what what, what investigation would you do what is your diagnosis what is your differential diagnosis okay so it, it's it's mainly like the mcq i would say like the written but you you should have you uh, look when you write an mcq exam you already have the answers you should know which one is the most right answer when you do an uh, oral exam so here you have to have a bit more memorization where like you should articulate your thought process you should articulate your eventual diagnosis so i find that maybe the content is less the things that they can test you to test your like thought process but there is an articulation that was not in the written exam you have to articulate you have to be good at articulating in your thought process and this is something what we, we i think uh, in internal medicine residencies across canada we develop really well during our residencies uh well when you discuss like your um uh, objective with your treatment plan uh, when you're doing your internal medicine uh, on the internal medicine ward with your staff or with your senior resident so it's something similar to that but it's a bit more stressful okay and they tell you also they can test you on different scenarios they can be on ambulatory setting and they can be in the emergency department they can be in the hospital they can be in a critical care setting so you might have a patient hypothetic hypothetical patient that could be stable coming for a annual exam checkup and there's an incidental finding to the degree that the patient is intubated and they have ARDS and they might test you on ARDS something in that uh, something something like that okay um so again they are testing the skills in data gathering data interpretation knowledge use an interpretation so they might give you some data and they ask you to interpret this data interpret this test um, and then they also tell you that uh, most frequently tested is cardiology and respirology frequently endocrine gi heme infectious disease neuronephroandrum um, and so those are the main things that they want to make sure that the canadian internal medicine physicians are really competent because that's what we see that's the uh, that's the bread and butter in, in uh, like uh, lots of heart failure and lots of copd uh, under internal medicine board um so the oral exam is scoring the scoring of the oral exam is different from the written the written you have a question it's right or wrong the oral there's a global rating scale which i just found out they also give you a an example they give you a template on the oral rating scale like if you go to the global sorry the, the global rating scale so there's a template in the website on how they score uh, uh, the resident who is writing the exam your abilities on data acquisition did not inquire about clinical information some gaps in data acquisition you might order some tests you might miss some tests inquire about and or identify all the information findings required uh, the uh, with physical exam you might say like i'm going to examine this i'm going to examine that uh, so if you demonstrated poor technique and poor interpretation uh, if you missed essential items like if you skipped lung exam let's say for example on a patient with copd uh, so that will be extremely deficient but if you were very like um, detailed in your exam and you like said i'm a patient with copd you're going to look for um, all the signs and symptoms of copd and emphysema so and you fulfilled all the criteria uh, so you were thorough and flexible uh, you had thorough and flexible examination skills and again so it's like uh there is uh some variability and how would they score uh i feel from one station to another and it depends is it like a station of diagnosis it's on station of data acquisition is it a station of differential so, so it really depends on what type of station but like they give you the royal college i feel like it's the first place you have the first website you have to read when you start preparing for your exam okay now let's talk about the resources okay so what resources to use 
If you go to the Royal College website, um, they tell you that people who wrote the Royal College previously, they use those resources. Again, like there are many international graduates as well, like US trained uh, who are writing our exams or like European trained who are writing our exams. Some people use MKSAP and like, it's a great, like I love it. Don't get me wrong. Um, but like uh, my, I'm sharing my own experience. Those are my own thoughts and my, my own ideas. I did not use any of these. Maybe I used a bit of MKSAP, maybe a bit of New England Journal of Medicine, but like uh, the IM Plus uh, question bank, but those were not my essential um, resources. Okay, I would say the number one study resource is your study group. Um, and what do I mean? What, why do you need a study group? You need a study group to discuss different topics. It's really helpful to have a group where you start early with them. You have like in your residency, you have four or five friends you really like. And I emphasize you really like because when you meet to discuss different topics, uh, like let's say uh, different things or different, like let's say today we're going to meet to discuss like uh, ICU topic. Right, so you're gonna spend lots of time with your friends. Uh, you're gonna spend um, uh, lots. You you might disagree with them on like how would they approach a case, uh, for example. So make sure you make a group with people you like because sometimes like uh, conflict can happen on approaching different things. Although like yes, it's it's medicine. It's like an exam. You don't think the person, but I heard sometimes like in different study groups things end up being personal. So study early and the study with people you like and the best number of a study group is like anywhere between four to five people more than that would be a bit hard to create study group and again i was just gonna say i know people who did the exam without a study group like it's it's not a must like but it's nice to have people to see like it's easier to uh suffer when other people are suffering with you it's it's not suffering but like it's just like it's easier to write an exam. It's easier to prepare for an exam when there is a, someone to support you emotionally. And if you don't know something, if both of you don't know the answer or how the, the approaching case, uh, it's it, it feels a bit better than you just don't know, right? Um, so the schedule. So it, it's really important to be systematic the way you approach this exam. You have to have a schedule for the study group and you have to have a schedule for yourself. So let's talk about the study group schedule. Uh, the easiest way is to create an online version like Excel or Google Sheets uh, where like resident one, resident two, three, four, five, and you have the dates here on top. Uh, let's say people will put their availability in blue color and people will put like when they are not available, they are on call uh, in red color. So that's why I said like four to five people, it's better. Uh, for the group number because like when people are not available like uh, like many of you guys will be on call if you're doing your intermediate residency so it's a bit difficult um, to find a date where everyone in a single week can meet so different people have also different schedules some some groups meet twice a week some groups meet once a week some groups meet three times a week uh, I think like once a week is enough again it's up to you and up to your group uh, so everyone like added here, for example, like everyone added their availability and let's say the group is going to meet on November 5th from X time to X time. So that's the study group schedule. So you need to have a schedule for the study group. Um, I didn't mention it here. Also, it's better to like also be systematic to track the things that you do with your study group to write them down. Like if you discuss uh, um, specific topic, write it down so you don't discuss this topic again in the future. Okay, so moving on, um, I'm going to talk about other resources I use, the IMR course. For me, I love the IMR course, and uh, this video is not sponsored by the Internal Medicine Review course. Uh, I just like, like the course, I like the way it's structured. It has it, 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 its pros and cons, and I will be systematic the way I talk about it. So, but in general, it, it's, re it's really great. It helped me to pass my exam for sure. Okay, uh, the IMR course, it's done by Dr. McKenna. She is an internal medicine um, staff. She graduated from the University of Toronto. Um, and now she practices, I believe, also like uh, in Northern Ontario. Um, she's a great teacher and like just uh, bringing all the people together to create this course is lots of work and kudos to her. Uh, the exam is great. So when you sign up for the exam, um, you will get the exam slides. Um, they come, they, they will send you the slides in a PDF electronic version and also they will send you the, uh, 
the like the book version uh, where there are, it's 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 mainly the slides that are printed so uh, one thing that i didn't like about the slides so the printed version if it was not slides and if it was like more uh created like as a book not just printed slides i think that would be much more easier to use the book. Uh, uh, people use the the hard copy, the the, the book that they sent, but I, uh, for me, I didn't like it. Um, so because it was like it was organized as slides and not as topics. Uh, again, it's my own opinion, but it's a great exam. I used the electronic PDF version of the slides. So you have the slides, and then you have the online three day uh crash course i would say where like uh dr mckenna bring all those fellows and all those staff who specializes in resp id cardio different specialties and through three days they will do lectures that are like around seven to eight hours a day for three days or two days and a half where you like watch all the lectures review all the guidelines uh so let's talk about the slides then one thing i wish i knew earlier that there are around 2,640 slides. They are a lot. Um, so, but there are, again, like uh, the info, because like there are slides, so if you condense them to a book, I think it's gonna be like 500 page book, something around that number, roughly speaking. Um, so there are a lot, and I will tell you how I would, uh, how I uh, created a schedule that helped me. Again, different people have different ways of creating uh, slides and uh, creating a schedule, but there are a lot, and that's why I'm mentioning this. So where does the slides come from? Um, there are the guidelines. Uh, so they use the guidelines, the Internet Medicine Review course, they use the guidelines, the Canadian guidelines and American guidelines, if, and if there are no like guidelines, usually there will be, but like they also had some recent trials, they also had some European guidelines. So it's a great, um, it's a, I really liked it. I really liked the course. I really like, uh, I, I really feel it helps, it helped me to not only pass the exam, but also like to become confident in my management plan and how I practice medicine, because uh, now I know what is in the guideline and what is not in the guideline, the guidelines. Okay, so I will tell you about my personal study schedule. And I believe this is really important. This really helped me to stay on track. So actually it's 2,460 uh, 2, slides, it looks like. So this is a rough number of the slides, um, plus or minus five or 10. So I, I created a schedule where like I wrote the, uh, this is an Excel, uh, Excel sheet. I wrote the number of the slides. So for me, the problem was I usually get bored easily. Uh, so when I was, I started with cardio and it's 227 slides. And when I hit the slides 50, I was like, that's it. I can't do more cardio. I need like a different topic. So I went to GI and then I went to resp and then I went back to cardio. So some people are able to do like 227 slides in like one or two weeks and finish them. But for me, that was not the case. So this helped me to stay on track. So let's say I did like uh, 50 so I would just like 50 slash 227 so I know how much how many slides I have and if I'm done with the slides I would like highlight this as green um, so here you can you I, I wrote the number of slides that I uh, studied and if you do the IMR course when you go to the website there are like there is lots of discussion about different topics um, and they are really good where like they save those discussions I really like that. So you can like learn not only from the people who are writing the exam at your year, in your year, but also you can learn from people who wrote the exam in previous years. So for me, that was important, something to do like uh, IMR website questions. If I did it, if I don't, if I read those questions, I would check right here or I make highlight it as green box if I did not. So it's going to be light blue. Other resources like uh, I'm using right now, uh, or also I use the American Board of Internal Medicine U Word Question Bank. I really love the American Board of U Word Question Bank. Um, so I, if I use that, I would just write that I did like X a question from that question bank just to make sure that I read them, review them. Um, if I just gonna add, again, you should be creative in your schedule, but having a schedule is helpful. Like the goal of this slide to show that it's really important to have a schedule, but like what are the components of the schedule? It's up to you. Okay. Um, so things I would do differently when it comes to the exam. Um, 
I would say like I really like the IMR again uh, this uh, video is not sponsored by IMR but I would use IMR for rotations not only for the exam like when I was like let's say for example in my second year um, uh, when I did like hematology rotation I wish I used the IMR slide the IMR hematology slides uh, when I was preparing for my hematology rotation because like you are just learning the guidelines or the diabetes like and endocrinology like uh, I was doing endocrinology clinic uh, I did endocrinology in my second year uh, and also I did endocrinology in my third year so there, there was a huge difference in my management plans uh, so if I in my second year before my Royal College exam if I knew about the IMR slides and if I used them when I was preparing for my endocrinology block that would make my life easier and uh, over the year like the information get only condensed but like again uh, lots of residents disagree with me this is my own opinion um, uh, the other thing I would do differently is the the lectures of the IMR so the lectures were I, I believe it was like Friday afternoon uh, Friday night and Saturday Sunday so the internal medicine review um, lectures were two days and a half and I was tired by the end of the Friday like uh, watching lectures four to eight hours on a three days in a row made me depressed and I was like why did I do this because like everyone is online everyone is watching the lectures what I would do differently let's say I would like okay so the first day I would watch a couple of hours until I'm, I'm bored the second day I would watch a couple of hours until I'm bored and then I would watch the lectures on my own time because they're all recorded so you don't need if, if you for, for me my attention span sucks like literally I don't have a long attention span like I got really bored by the Sunday I was yes watching the uh, it was Friday Saturday Sunday but so by Sunday at the end of the day I was watching the lectures but I was like in different world I could not really concentrate uh, I was cooking and watching the lecture so that really didn't work well uh, but again because like the exam anxiety lots of people uh, they just don't stop watching the lectures and they get bored and they continue watching the lectures um, so we don't don't worry it's all recorded uh, what I would do differently is I would not watch lectures uh, in a three days in a row I would like uh, what I would do differently is like every day 14 to like 15 to minutes to one hour I would watch lectures on my own time so those are the things that I would do differently um, application used so the IMR course is great we talk about it this is the resource but I really use two applications that help me to prepare for this exam and one of them I knew over the years and one of them I use for my exam and I love it so now it's uh, one of them is called liquid text so liquid text I will show you the liquid text in the coming slides it's an application to open PDF um, and it's amazing like this is like game changer for reading PDFs I use it right now even my like uh, research projects because like uh, it's very powerful um, and the other application it's Anki flashcards uh, I love to systematically review things uh, so I will show you how I create my flashcards and uh, why I really love Anki okay so let's get started what is liquid text so let me demonstrate why I really love liquid text um, and I prefer it to prepare for the Royal College exam um, so here I have the uh, IMR slides uh, and as you can see like the 2022 slides we have infectious disease we have the cardiology critical care different slides and those are the slides that I used to study for my uh, Royal College exam okay so if let's say I want to start with cardiology so double or like uh, I'm using um, MacBook Air right now so I'm on Apple platform and I will open this instead of the regular Adobe uh, reader I will go and open it with liquid text okay so now liquid text is going to ask me if I wanted to add it a new file uh, add to existing file for the purpose of this video I will say uh, I will tell uh, I will say to liquid text please add it to a new file okay so now we have the cardiology slides Okay, I'm just going to click here on the arrow so as you can see we have the cardiology slides and we have these slides here and then here we have a workspace so let's say for example if you're using an um, iPad so that's what I use like you can link stuff here and you can write something uh, XYZ it's, it's hard for me to write but like using an iPad it was great to write and you can also adjust the size of your workspace 
and let's say you are somewhere else and you want to like um, and you want to like, like take a look at this note so just you click on it so it will scroll up uh, where the page was Let, let's try again so let's say like you wrote something here and you are scrolling down and you remember you, you want to look that up and you so you just click on the link and it will bring you back to the slides where you, uh, w w so you can link your notes in the workspace to the slides so that's something that i really like in uh, liquid text but like not that that's not the main reason so i open cardiology let's say i want to also open infective endo sorry not infective endo that is i want to open infectious disease and uh, imr 2022 okay so we're going to open the infectious diseases slides and they are here okay and we're going to say open with liquid text again so when i open them to liquid text i will tell liquid text add it to the current file okay so here we have cardiology and we have infectious disease so those two now are in the same project okay why i find liquid text very helpful let's say i want to read about or i want to look for infective endocarditis okay so i will click on the search button and i will say endocarditis okay and i will tell liquid text to search in this document only which is cardiology okay so when i click enter so it will find every word of endocarditis but the great thing about it is when you pinch on the bar so you so that it, it's literally the pdf is liquid you can bring all the endocarditis together and you can see where is the word endocarditis mentioned so when you are studying with your friends for example you can look up endocarditis or you can look up different diseases very quickly and the nice thing about it is let's say i want to look up infective endo like here i'm in cardiology slides and it says like infective endocarditis indication for prophylaxis against infective no class one will be covered in another section infectious disease so i don't need to close this and go to infectious disease and open it again so you are saving the clicks and literally when you have like hundreds of slides and like 10 to 14 decks like it's so easy to just like waste time but instead i can tell liquid text so search all document actually okay so i know like it is um when i click on search all document you can see that liquid text highlighted in red the cardiology and the infectious disease so if you have allergy here it won't highlight allergy about endocarditis because the word endocarditis is not mentioned in the allergy slides right so if i sell like this document so you're going to notice that there are no highlights here the highlights appear here so you can just scroll up and it can show you where are the highlights or you can pinch and you can bring all the highlights together so in this document those are all th these are the, all the words endocarditis but if i tell liquid text search all documents together so it will search also the infectious disease and that's what makes it really easy um so if i go to infectious disease just a sec so if i go to infectious disease here okay so in the infectious disease is already highlighted all the endocarditis and if i pinch and bring the endocarditis words together so it will show me like the, there, there's a question about endocarditis and then like i zoom in the slides and i look at the question and then i look up the, so it's much more easier to search questions and to search a specific words when you are using liquid text and this will save you so much time going forward because like for a specific condition you can search not only the cardiology document but you can search all the documents okay so that's why i love liquid text so this is reason number one and reason number two is the workspace so you can create mind map here if you're a person who like like create mind maps you can write notes so when i was like watching these slides uh, uh sorry the imr videos uh i created lots of notes from what they said in the videos and i just like link them to the text or link them to the slides and it's amazing like you can magnify the slides you can um make the slides bigger smaller whatever you like everything is liquid and you are uh, free to move between like not only single uh, topic but like many many topics or many organ systems 
So that's why I love liquid text and uh, I just use it for everything. Uh, one more thing I'm going to mention before uh, ending the video is, so when you create a project, I think it's saved in the uh, uh, cloud. So the next time I'm going to open uh, cardiology or infectious disease, I don't go to my computer and I open them. I just go to liquid text. So I go to home and this project will be saved in liquid text. There are many projects. I'm not going to look that up. So I'm just going to open it from here. Okay, so uh, opening a project from liquid text, so that's how your notes are saved. Because anytime you, so this is the project here, I think, uh, so that was, a, it was edited in July 2021. So every time um, you, you open it from your computer, so if you open it from the finder, it will create a, sorry, this is not the one. Uh, okay, so it will, um, so every time you open it from here, it will create a new project and you don't want to open a new project. You're just going to open it from the uh, liquid text itself. Okay, so the second app I used was Anki. I love Anki. I, I've been using Anki since my medical school and it just helped me to learn things systematically and I feel more confident when I learn a topic and when I use Anki. So uh, I, people say like making flashcard takes time. Uh, I would disagree. That's not the situation. I would say like it's it's so easy. So let's say uh, let, let's take an example. So first, before doing any example, let me show you here. I have like uh, as you can see different decks and uh, endocrinology, geriatrics, GI, like literally all the decks. I use them for the Royal College. I created those flashcards, and then I also have a deck for the U Word American Board Intelligence Exam. I'm, I'm preparing for American Board, so you can see this. So you you have two ways of creating decks in Anki. So either you create a deck for each topic, or you create a deck where you put all the flashcards together. So the benefits of putting all the flashcards together is it will give you the chance to always review all things, and you will never forget things. But uh, the downside is you're going to have lots of things to review and you can always control how much. So this is the new uh, flashcards and this is the review flashcard numbers. So I can choose like right now I'm in the learning process of the UWord uh, ABIM question bank. So uh, the notes I take, I have 16 flashcards to review today, sorry, to learn today. And I have one to review. You can control this. Uh, in the settings, uh, you can control and say, tell Anki how much you want to review and how much do you want to learn anew. Or you can create a deck for every uh, topic. So right now, uh, let's say I'm studying the critical care from the internal medicine review uh, slides and I'm studying the ARDS, right? So what I can do is I can, so I created a deck, it's called the test deck, but I already have the Royal College um, ICU here. Uh, let's go to the test deck and let's say I'm just going to start, uh, I just studied, uh, so I'm going to add questions here. I want to study ARDS, right? So I have two ways of adding a flashcard. So first way is you can just a screenshot, okay, ARDS and like the, the slide as is and you can control V here. So it's done, it's there. And then you can, in the front, you can ask yourself, what are the diagnostic criteria of ARDS. So this is by typing. Other way would be, you can dictate, like Apple gives you the dictation option. Let's give it a try. Okay, and it's pretty cool, like it's pretty good, like it's not uh, like a dragon, but it still works. So let's give it a try now. What are the diagnostic criteria of ARDS? So almost 100% accuracy but again i'm using a microphone here and like uh, there are there aren't many medical boards except ARDS usually apple dictation is usually good you don't need to buy like more fancy dictation and like either you can type your question or you can dictate the question and then you have the answer here another topic another thing i really find very helpful is when i add tags i love adding tags to my flashcards again you can skip this uh, I have lots of ads I will show uh, tags I will show you but like you can skip this but it helps me to m collect information that are related to one topic in Anki and like that's where I store my information that's how like I teach myself like uh, to always 
I always store my all information um, in Anki. So in one day, if I want to go back to and review things I know about ARDS, so I just go to Anki and I tell him, show me the flashcards that are related to ARDS. So whether they are coming from uh, the internal medicine review question uh, slides or they are coming from the American Board of Internal Medicine uh, question bank, U word, or they are coming from uh, the thing that I learned on the ward or during my ICU rotation. So tags are very helpful uh, just in the future if you want to still use Anki after your exam. So it will help to combine all the information that you get about a specific topic uh, under, a, uh, on it, uh, under a specific tag. Okay, so that's one way. You either you type and you write, uh, you, you control, uh, sorry, you, you copy paste your answer. So again, it doesn't take time. Let's delete this. Let's delete this. Let's say I said it there, the S. So I'm just going to take a screenshot here. Okay, so I'm going to put it in the back and then I'm going to double click the what are the diagnostic criteria of ARDS. And boom, I have a flashcard. Let's add this. Another way is the image occlusion tool. So this is an add-on you can download uh, online. It's not hard, it's not difficult. You, adding add-ons to Anki is pretty easy. Uh, the nice thing about add-ons, like uh, it helps you to cover part of the image. So if I'm gonna take this slide, and so I'm doing a screenshot, shift control command four, okay? I did that and I click on the image occlusion tool. Okay, so now I will have ARDS here. So I can do an occlusion here. So uh, so now when I'm gonna see the questions, I don't have to write the question and answer. I have the slide. I know the slide is talking about ARDS, but I know I'm testing myself of the diagnostic criteria of ARDS. So this is one way. And then let's say I wanna test also myself on this what is ARDS so of course like by your third year of internal medicine residency you should know what is ARDS but let, let's say I want to test myself on ARDS so like I just like occlude this so now I have two ways to tell um, Anki if I want to create two questions or one question so if I want to create two questions from this one of them will test me on what is ARDS and the other will test me what are the diagnostic criteria of ARDS so I say like hide all guess one. So I'm just gonna guess one, I'm gonna click on this. So this will create two flashcards, I think. Let's give it a try. Yeah, two cards added. Okay, another way, if I wanna test myself once on this slide, I can click on both, I can click shift and then click on both occlusions and then group them together, click on G. So when you click on G, this will tell Anki like a group the mask together and then you can say hide, uh, hide all guess one so this will add only one flashcard okay uh, so let's close this um, so this was another way of adding a question to my hypothetical list deck okay so let's close this as well so now I have this uh, deck of questions I want to study right now so let's study now so what are diagnostic criteria this is like if I'm gonna do dictation and then I'm gonna show me the answer. So like, boom, so I can just like always test myself. I'm gonna tell Anki if it's hard, it's difficult. I wanna like, sometimes I just review the same flashcard two or three times after six minutes or after 10 minutes, just to make sure I'm like, uh, I can uh, condense information in my brain. And then like I say, show me this card in five days. Okay, another way is the other way that we use the image occlusion, as you can see here. So now it's testing me only on diagnostic criteria. Show answers and show me the answer. Okay, the, uh, this is the second flashcard that I created from the same PowerPoint. Okay, and the last thing that created is like uh, uh, Anki can occlude both and you're gonna test yourself uh, on both questions. So it really depends on how you like, how many questions you want to create. You can create as many as image occlusions or questions from a specific uh, flash, uh, sorry, from a specific slide. So I really love Anki and I think it's really great to use it. And it's just nice because like you can always review, like let's say if you are doing like hematology fellowship or like any type of fellowship and you, you want to review the things that you studied in the past. So you can just go to that deck and you can just re, uh, rehearse those questions. Okay, so uh, now I would just wanna also mention the function of the um, 
tag uh, and how Anki is powerful in showing you the information that you need. So like if you go to uh, the browse button here, if you're under Anki and you just browse your flashcards, so you can see that Anki have different ways of like categorizing flashcards. Uh, you can flag your flashcards or you can see like what are the new flashcards or learning flashcards or flashcards that are due to review. And this is across all the information that you have in your decks. And then you can see different decks what flashcards do they have and then you can see the type of cards and then finally you can see the tag so um i just wanted to show you why like i really like the tag as you see like i have lots of tags everything i learn i just like tag it under different um uh, different topics so this will help me so l l let's say i go to the ibd here so the inflammatory bowel disease like i know some information that i learned from the uword uh, abim question bank and I know some information that I learned from the Royal College GI uh, question, uh, slides, right? So I tag those under IBD. So now like if I just want to review topic IBD, I want to like see what are the things that I studied uh, in the past when I was preparing for my board exams related to IBD. So I can just go to Anki and tell Anki, show me my, the information that I learned over the years related to IBD. And you can like add things that you learn on the world, add things that you learn from like books or add things that you learn from other question banks like the NKSAP or the New England Journal of Medicine like IM plus knowledge question bank. So you can uh, always, uh, when you click on IBD, Anki will show you the information that you accumulated over the years about IBD. And even it's helpful when you're preparing for your OSCE. Like for example, uh, when I was preparing for my written, I was like thinking, oh, maybe this is an important for an OSCE. So I would add the tag OSCE and this will uh, like uh, the things that I think that can be asked or can be tested on the ASCII exam after all college, I would just add the tag ASCII uh, on it. So like that's helpful. Um, another thing is also helpful in Anki, like uh, one or two days before my exam, I wanted to review the things that I really messed up. Uh, so you can see it here. But for example, there is something else you can uh, differentiate the, the cards is like you can add a flag. So the cards that I felt that they were important, they had numbers like I had to memorize a specific numbers or I had to spe memorize a specific days or I had to spe memorize specific doses. Like if, anything that is related to memorization that I felt like I need to read it the day before the exam, I would flag it as red. Okay, so or like orange or green, whichever you like. And then the day before the exam, I would just go and look at like what are my uh, red flag cards. Obviously, like I had lots of that. So that was just before the exam. The things that crossed the decks that I felt like they need to be reviewed uh, just before the exam because like they were important. So I added the red flag and you can always uh, remove the red flag in the future if you want, uh, if you like. So that's why Anki is powerful because like the image occlusion, the search function, the tag function and things that you can accumulate over the years where you, you can create an organized way to memorize uh, things an organized way also to just to know what you know. And, you know, eventually if something that you read and you just want to add it to your knowledge, you just add it to Anki and you test yourself in the future.